Hey guys, how's it going? I'm making this video to refute the NIFB reprobate doctrine. If you guys have been enjoying the videos, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. God bless. Alright, so I want to start this video off by saying some positive things about the NIFB. For those of you who don't know, the NIFB stands for New Independent Fundamental Baptists. It was started by Pastor Steven Anderson, to my understanding because he saw the old IFB watering down the truth of the Bible. They do some great door-to-door -door soul winning, they've led countless people to salvation, and they do get the gospel right when they're not preaching the reprobate doctrine. There's some awesome brothers and sisters in the NIFB, and it's not my intention with this video to condemn or put anyone down. Jesus Christ has put this video on my heart to make. It's important to realize that no man or organization is right about everything, and we need to go to God's word for ourselves to get the truth. So, the NIFB reprobate doctrine teaches that no homosexual can be saved. They teach that once a person starts practicing homosexuality, that's evidence that they're a reprobate and they will never believe in Jesus Christ. This teaching comes from Romans 1. It reads, And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. So we see from this passage that there is a direct link between homosexuality and a reprobate mind. But if we read on, we see that these reprobates were doing all sorts of other sins as well. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. We need to define what a reprobate is in the Bible. Jeremiah 6.30 reads, Reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. A reprobate is someone who has been rejected by God. They rejected the truth so many times that their hearts have been hardened and they can't be saved because they won't ever believe the truth. A reprobate mind is when somebody's moral compass is gone. They no longer have a conscience. That's why in Romans 1 they were filled with all unrighteousness. Modern day psychology calls reprobates by a different name. Psychopaths. I believe a psychopath is a synonym for reprobate in modern times. Now there's also a direct link between false prophets and reprobates. Titus 1.16 reads, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. If we go back to verse 10, we see in context that this is talking about works trusters. Titus 1.10 reads, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. They of the circumcision is referring to Jews who trusted in their works and rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. The only other occurrence of reprobate in the Bible is in 2 Timothy 3.8, and we see the same theme here as in the other verses. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. So, since there's a link between false prophets and reprobates, does that mean every false prophet is a reprobate? No, it doesn't. Because Paul was a hardcore works truster who made it his life's mission to persecute the church, and Jesus Christ saved him. Romans 9.15 reads, For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now we're going to look at the biblical evidence refuting NIFB teaching that no homosexuals can be saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. 
And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. In this passage, Paul says the phrase, abusers of themselves with mankind, which is a direct reference back to Leviticus 18.22, an Old Testament verse that condemns homosexuality. The Greek word used for abusers of themselves with mankind is arsenokoidis, and this is the Strong's definition of the word. If you still don't believe it, let's take a look at the Greek translation of Leviticus 18.22. We see from the Greek words of Leviticus 18.22 that arsenokoitis is a combination of two words, arsenos, which means a man, and koidin, which means to bed. The truth is out in the open for those with eyes to see. Going back to 1 Corinthians 6, we see that Paul says, such were some of you. Some of the people who got saved at Corinth were practicing homosexuality. This is direct evidence that homosexuals can be saved and not every one of them is a reprobate. It's not up to us to say who is and who isn't a reprobate because only God knows for sure. I definitely have had my suspicions about certain false prophets being reprobates and I've called specific people reprobates in my previous videos which I'm going to stop doing. Because Romans 10 reads, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ, bring up Christ again from the dead. The NIFB reprobate doctrine that no homosexuals can be saved is false, and I see it as backloading a work of the law into the gospel. Since they say every homosexual can't be saved, they're entering dangerous territory with this doctrine. Romans 3-4 reads, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Let's pray for Pastor Stephen Anderson and all the NIFB members that they come to the truth about this in love. God bless you guys, in Jesus' name, have a good one.